Congratulations, David Quinn. You won the giveaway from last week. Comic fam, let's chat some trending funny books. You know, comic books. Comic Familia, we're at the table with an Overstreet Price Guide advisor. Russ, hit him with number 10 on our list. Number 10 on the list, Marvel premiere number 10. This is the first full appearance of Shuma Gorath. And this book is selling for $100 average sales. And we had a high sale reported of $750 for a CGC 8.5. Hit that subscribe button, slap the like button. We're shooting for a thousand likes. Can we get it? Something that happened this past week was a puzzle reveal. A thousand pieces that featured Doctor Strange, that featured the Multiverse of Madness hype, and a villain, a foe, one of the most powerful entities, demonic creatures in the Marvel multiverse, larger than our universe, Shumagorath. Comic fan, we are seeing a 600% increase in copies sold this week, but this book has been on spec radar because we had information that the movie was going to be a horror-style interdimensional travel thing back in July 2019. We're also seeing movement on Marvel premiere number five, where Shuma Gorath is mentioned in name only. Marvel Premiere 5 made the trending 20, the larger list where we source all of this great comic book information from, we're talking Key Collector Comics, the best comic app in existence. So much comic information that you have access to on your phone, available for both Androids and iPhones, key books, as well as spec investment recommendations and cataloging your collection. Shuma Gorath is a demonic entity constantly trying to infiltrate our universe. I think this book making our list this week means much more than a villain potential, more than this jigsaw reveal. And I'm not talking saw over here. I think that with America Chavez slated for the multiverse of madness, Shuma Gorath has to make his way, its way, into our universe somehow. How about a superhero that has the ability to travel between dimensions? America Chavez, I suspect, is going to have a lot bigger of a role than anyone foresaw. Moving from movie spec to a brand new book released this week. We're talking JTC, John Tyler Christopher at the list at number nine. We have X-Men Legends number eight, the one in 25 Wolverine action figure variant. Now, a lot of members know John Tyler Christopher from his banger work on all of these negative space variants, but don't get it twisted. His rise to fame, to stardom happened long ago, particularly with his amazing work on multiple action figure variants, his Star Wars line, the dude pretty much drew all of them. That's right, Tom. If it wasn't every single Star Wars book, it was pretty darn close. I'm at the point where I'm looking at some of these characters going, oh my God, I can't believe that he did an action figure variant of that character, but he's been such a popular person for so long. So the fact that this one making the list, this is exceptional. $40 $40 average sales. I suspect nostalgia is at play big time here, yeah? Oh, definitely. If you like this particular variant, I mean, Logan is a great spec. This is crossing fandoms with the toy market. Take a look at the other Marvel heroes he has brought to variant. And this is a unique creator because he has his own website, similar to Mike Mayhew, Patrick Gleason. John Tyler Christopher releases his own variants for sale that anyone can buy if you are waiting up to get that drop. You need to sign up for his mailing list to get that notification so you can get his variants for a reasonable price. Now stay tuned to the end of the video. We're going to be giving away this something is killing the children variant, but not before we talk about number eight on the list. We have old haunts number one, seeing $15 average sales and a high sale for a raw copy of $30 an increase a copy sold of 2,100% because Russ, I don't think anyone's specking on this book. No, this is one of those books that came from a publisher, AWA, and we had an announcement last week that they had two titles that they were going to be bringing to screen. So we got old haunts getting developed. We also have Chariot. Oh, Ryan, 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 calling the spec. Chariot was an amazing run. However, old haunts is a crime noir based in horror on the streets of L.A., and this is an absolute must read. Five short issues drawn exquisitely. The colors, the lighting is done with such purpose. The thing is a work of art. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, if you look at the art on this one, it's so reminiscent of like early Vertigo. You've got this Lucifer Sandman feel. Or like if you're a, a Brubaker fan and you've read any of his recent graphic novels, it kind of gives that feel. AWA is just hitting it out of the park on all of their books right now. 
Congrats to the creators, Rob Williams, Ollie Masters, and Lawrence Campbell. Next on the list at number seven, we're talking Venom. We're talking the first host, the first person to host the symbiote. $15 average sales and $55 for a high CBCS 9.8 sale. I have a very strong feeling we're going to start seeing more of those C2C sales in the very near future because writer Rom V tweeted out this last week a picture that looks a lot like a flashback of Tel Car, which is the original host of the Venom symbiote that's explored in this five issue miniseries. This writer is also teaming up with Al Ewing, who was formerly on Immortal Hulk, to take on the now Donny Cates legacy of Venom. Issue number one is coming. Take a look at our Raph Grissetti variant. It's a banger. ComicTom101.com to join the community and get yours one per box in November with less than two weeks to join. I suspect that this character has way more to do in the Venom lineage, especially considering that most of the focus post this short miniseries was all on Sleeper. That's right, Tom. Sleeper was introduced in issue three when Eddie Brock had to give back the symbiote to the original host. But this book is seeing a 400% increase in copies sold this week. There's also an incredible Rod Reese 1 in 25 variant. And I think this is a book that people are going to be looking to pick up a lot right now. Take a look at the Clayton Crane variant. There was a lot of store variants for this issue, but that Clayton Crane one is stellar. The color work is amazing. It's what he's known for. And at the list at number six, we've already talked about Donnie Cates once today. Let's just keep it going with Thor issue number six, the second print. This book was so big, it was rushed back to print quickly, including the panel, beautifully drawn by Nick Klein, as the cover art. $8 average sales, $75 for a CGC 9.8 for Thor 6, the second print. This features the death of Galactus. This is the issue where Black Winter provides Thor, our god of thunder, a vision of what he will see during his time of death. And he sees a plethora of Marvel zombified heroes, Thanos wielding Mjolnir with infinity stones on it and a black gauntlet. But that's all we know. That's all we've seen. But Donny Cates said he doesn't do things for no reason. 414% increase in copies sold because we have many, many teasers pointing to this all tying together in the timeless Marvel event coming out December 22nd if they don't push it back. Timeless is going to be a one shot that's going to set the stage for 2022. Multiple narratives that will unfold, including Kang, including the death of Celestials, Doctor Doom, and of course, Thanos. Marvel has been laying a trail of breadcrumbs leading up to this event, and the latest teaser has fallen Celestials laying around Kang's sword-shaped spaceship, asking, how will Entropy lead to the end of the Marvel Universe? Entropy, the slow heat death of the universe. Will Kang speed up time a couple billion years to cause our sun to go out? Well, we're going to find out soon. We also see a teaser featuring this very comic book page and the second print cover depicting Thanos saying what weapon will Thanos wield to threaten the future of the MCU it appears that Thor will see his time of demise sooner than we thought Tom did you see Jared Leto's latest audition tape oh yeah he went all out dude oh totally yeah I mean he went as full Batman as he could in this latest audition tape I think they're calling it the Morbius movie at the list of number five we're talking Black Cat for a reason ASM 194 her first appearance because the Morbius trailer dropped this week and dude, it looks outstanding. Oh my God, it's so good. Just bats flying at my face. Now I do have a Jared Leto bias. I love me some Joker. American Psycho, 30 Seconds to Mars was in my headphones all throughout high school. Jared Leto is a beautiful, beautiful man. And I'm so excited <laughs> to be able to see him in this movie. But if you see the newspaper, you get this little tiny blurb in the corner that talks about Black Cat, whether she's a friend or a foe, which means she's coming. Indeed, we've actually heard rumors since January of this year that not only Black Cat was slated for a possible team-up movie, but that we were going to see Jackpot, possibly Silk, and Spider-Woman in 
Silver Sable hit the screen as well. Well, this comic is seeing $550 average sales, an increase of copies sold of 175% for a pricey book. And the 9.8s have been all over this year and they're climbing back up. Back in May, we saw the highest sale at $5,760 for a CGC 9.8. But before that, in January, it was at low of $2,298. Then we also saw a sale in October just a couple months ago for $3,803. And then this very month, we have a $4,000 sale since this trailer dropped. Now, it doesn't take eagle eyes to notice Michael Keaton, the vulture in this trailer. But if you are paying attention to the newspaper, there is something about a zoo breakout. That's right. A rhino has escaped the zoo. Could this just be something funny? I don't know, possibly. But why'd they pick rhino when there's a villain named the rhino in Spider-Man? Considering that that may be the case, I think the connections between all of these movies are larger than anyone is expecting. And if you can't afford the first appearance of Morbius, well, the next best thing is at number four. Number four on the list, Morbius the Living Vampire, number one. Now, this is from the early 1990s, and this is his first solo series under his own title. Now, we were seeing high sales of ASM number 101, his first appearance, $23,000 in June. So if you could pick up this one, $12 average sales and a $200 CGC 9.8, That's where a lot of people are going. We also saw a $300 CGC 9.8 newsstand edition of this book. And when you consider the spikes that ASM 101 has had, as early as January of this year, that book was going for $12,000. That's an increase of 10 grand in under 11 months. Talk about gains. 425% increase in copies sold this week. And this book is going nowhere because I think as we get closer to the release of the Morbius movie, more people will be picking up this affordable book. And now at the list at number three, a character that no one knows, Silver Surfer 53, the general of the Kree Space Force, Aldan. $5 $5 average sales and $175 for a CGC 9.8. There's only 26 of these graded and there were only 10 of them, two of them signed, at a CGC 9.8. This is an odd book to see graded. So the fact that there are any graded sales out there is impressive. So comic fam, tread lightly on this one. We're seeing an increase of copies sold of 833% since this rumor dropped. Zoe Ashton, who we knew was going to play a role in the Marvel's movie alongside of Ms. Marvel, our Captain Marvel, Kamala Khan, and the like. And it's supposed to connect to Secret Invasion, which is going to have a bunch of scrolls in the storyline. So it am Makes sense that we're going to see some Kree in this movie. Zoe Ashton is slated to play Aldan, a Kree general. Sounds like they're going to gender swap the character. So this is interesting spec because this character was only in three issues. And the fact that we've heard Zoe Ashton tied to Rogue and then potentially to Storm and then to Black Cat, we're still not quite certain what we're going to see her playing. The rumor also says that Zoe will be one of the main villains, but not the greatest antagonist because that's going to be reserved for the Emperor, who... This general goes up against in this comic book. Next at the list, at number two, congratulations, McFarlane, the Todd father expanding his McFarlane empire, taking it to Hollywood. Todd McFarlane announced this week that he is making a TV production unit, and they have two things already in production. They have McFarlane and a series called Thumbs based on this comic book. Thumbs number one, seeing $5 average sales. We have a 9.8 sale that hit $281 in the last couple of days. Get this. We talk about a lot of percentages on this show. There were zero sales prior to this announcement. And since the date of this filming, over 80 copies have moved on eBay alone. This is definitely one of those books that no one was specking on. This announcement from Todd was very surprising, but it's also good to hear that Sam and Twitch is still in production. It's just going to be taking a backseat to thumbs. This is a weird comic. Didn't really take off that much, I suspect, because it was such a unique art style, but it follows tech-obsessed teens that have to fight a war with an anti-tech government. 
Now, Thumb sounds interesting, but I'm actually really excited for McFarland, which is supposed to be a stop-motion animated series that Thomas Lennon from Reno 911 is going to be partnering with. It's described as Night at the Museum meets Toy Story meets Twin Peaks, which means I'm excited and we could probably get Fire Guy Ryan to watch it too. Don't worry, comic fan, because Deadline does make sure to mention that Todd is still plotting the Spawn universe. High hopes for our independent record leader in comic books, hit the subscribe. Slap the like. Can we hit a thousand likes? Comment down below. Let me know what you think about this list. Do you own any of these books? Do any of these make you want to spec on other things? Help your fellow members. It'll enter you to win. Something is Killing the Children, issue 16, the Raph Grissetti. Comic Tom Milgi Comics, trade dress variant, and hit them at number one. Number one on the list, War of the Realms, New Agents of Atlas, number two. Two, we are seeing $50 average sales and $250 high sale for a CGC 9.8 of this first full appearance of Swordmaster. As early as July 2020, Marvel was hyping up both characters, saying they had big plans for Arrow and Swordmaster. Now, as we transition into November, we're seeing teasers of Iron Fist, a new series that's coming that's soliciting that we're going to get someone new behind the mask. Who is the new Iron Fist? And there was an additional teaser that shows an homage to ASM 50, Spider-Man No More. You know, Peter Parker walking away from the spider suit. And what's this on the floor it appears to be sword master's green sword in shambles will sword master take over and become the new iron fist only time will tell but a 429 percent increase means there's a lot of interest in this book keep an eye out for issue one of war of the realms new agent of atlas that book sees 40 dollar average sales all day because it's a plethora of first appearances sword master is on the cover but not on the interior he makes his full appearance on the book that made number one issue two today hit the like slap the subscribe and as always geek responsibly enough said comic fam we got two other videos for you to check out i have a new series with skeleton key comics comic book 101 if you are late for class you're gonna get detention take a look at the hottest 10 comic books in the world with gem from gem and collectibles it's your boy gem mint and go follow us over on whatnot the best new app to buy and sell comic books every single wednesday we're packing the house you're there. I'm there along with the rest of the crew every Wednesday for What Not Wednesday. $1 start, one minute auctions. Come join us and have a great week.